They won, and that's all that matters in this results-based business. And I'll say this, after the game, when they do this fog machine and all that. Yeah, club dub. Greg Penner looked really happy. Oh, Penner's up in the, the it's dub. it's Greg club. and Kerry, and it's the ownership group writing that check. Okay, yeah, you're right. This you're is right. a big mm-hmm. ask for Sean Payton. Sean Payton asked this last year, and they said no. Mm. He asked this year. They said yes. Again, weather could have cooperated. And I'm sure if the weather was better, we'd have a different conversation. Like, wow, this is really cool, and the guys are hanging. They were, because you couldn't go outside. Right. You couldn't play the golf on the favorite course, mm-hmm. right? You were just stuck in your 200-year-old hotel room. <laughs> Looked like something out of The Shining, right? <laughs> yeah. Scotty Gaines tweeted out his picture of his room. It like had this. Uh, it looked like Cam Newton's scarf oh, really? as your wallpaper, right? Oh, wow. It was just like, just odd. Look it up, man. It was, uh, it was incredible. But like they won. It smells like ashtrays and Werther's original in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, smell. It smelled like something. That's for sure. But like, okay, I I get it. Um, and I feel at a certain point, to a certain level, guys had fun together. But also at the same time. What's best for the Broncos? That's all I really care about. Mm-hmm. And what's best for the Broncos is, yeah, you could have had somewhere with an indoor facility. Or if you designed it, Sean, why didn't you design it with an indoor facility? Yeah, that's a very, very fair question, especially if he knew he wanted to bring his football teams up there to get ready for some work. Uh, before we check in and hear from Bo and some of his postgame statements, Cease, just uh, an overall thought on performance of Bo. One, he gets his first touchdown pass. Right. That, that's kind of like that bugaboo's out of the way now. It doesn't have to be talked about every single week. Sure, Bo right, asked right. about it or just living in the back of his head like, God, i got to get this out of my way. Mm-hmm. It's done. It's out of the way. He should be thanking Cortland Sutton because Cortland goes up and makes a big-time catch. I don't know if it slipped out of Bo's hands or, or he just you know, thought Cortland was a little deeper than he was, but that ball was close to not being brought back, brought down yeah, court in the bailed him out as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Court bailed him out. So – how do we feel? I mean, okay. You know, uh, again, I'm not going to fall for the trap of, you know, and he, he's been terrible and done most every game. He's been terrible. Well, I chart the plays. He hasn't been terrible. For the people that are saying that Bo Nix has been terrible, they don't know football. They're not paying attention. Kev's getting all excited now. But it's like, <laughs> you, l- listen, we have to talk honestly. Seek the truth and speak the truth. Yeah. Bo Nix has not been as advertised yet. And I emphasize the yet because your past results give you that future. Your future results are based on your past performance. Mm-hmm. Like, you can tell there is a correlation. And I know that Bo Nix will get better. Struggle, improve, excel. We're definitely in the struggle part. It looked like he'd never seen a raindrop. Um, So it's like, what is this substance falling from the sky? Like, uh, maybe it was acid rain. I don't know. It is New York, right? But, like, um, I I just don't know. I'm I'm patient with Bo Nix. If this was week 12, we'd have a different conversation. It's not. And the weather was garbage. So it's like, okay, (sighs) How do you get him better in a bad weather game? That's mm-hmm. that's my end result of where we're at with Bo Nix. But well, it wasn't good. And it's also bad weather. He's a rookie playing in his fourth game right. uh, in the, at the NFL level. And his coach does him absolutely zero favors until the final 30 minutes of the football game. Th- those are big problems. And then that third and 11 throw that we've talked about, the touchdown drive a couple of uh, series before, third and 11, he takes the three-step drop, he climbs the ladder, he plants that back foot, he hits Cortland on a dime, a rope to Cortland as he's in motion, didn't have to stop, didn't have to reach back, didn't have to reach out, hit him in stride. Those are the little steps. Those are the little signs of improvement that mm-hmm. we're talking about. Of course, we'd want him to look like Jaden Daniels right now. Everyone would. But Caleb Williams doesn't look like Jaden Daniels right now. Right. J.J. McCarthy's hurt and not playing at all. And looks like that job might not be his for a while with what Sam Donald's got going on. And uh, who was the other guy? Penix Jr. He's still not on the field Drake either. Drake May's not playing and Drake yet. May. Mm-hmm. All of those guys, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr. You know what they're going to do too? Struggle, improve, and excel. Bo's just now five games ahead of them. Yes. So keep it up. Keep playing him. And hopefully Sean Payton helps out Bo more by running the ball. Mm -hmm. And that also ties into the defense. But also Sean's got to get better at in-game play calling. And I can't believe after four games, Pat Shermer's offense looks better than Sean Payton's (laughs) offense. That's disgusting to me because for the people that say there's there's a lot of um, 
Well, I'll just I'll just say it. Like, there's a lot of stupid takes that are floated out there about like Sean Payton's offense is antiquated. That's not the case at all. Can Sean Payton do better with the order of his plays? Yes, one thousand percent. And I'm not saying that because I know more about him because I don't, and he's forgotten more about football than me or whatever I have to say so that they don't. That my key to the building still works, but it's like, <laughs> okay, um, Sean, can you have a little better rhythm? Can your first 15 be better? Mm-hmm. Other than the Tampa game, his first 15 have been uh, off. I'll try to be nice. Try. But he needs to be better early on. He needs to set up Bo better with better rhythm of play calling. Yeah, let's uh, hear a little bit from Bo Nix after that win. They get a W10-9, 2-2, two and two, coming back from the East Coast swing. Here's what Bo Nix said to open his press conference about the big win and dealing with weather drive footballs out there but it's that's that's how it's going to be you know they were having to do the same thing usually these weather games they turn into you know run the football games and that's what we did in the second half so it worked in our favor and we didn't turn the ball over we you know kept throwing completions on first and second down and then we got a few third down completions you know one being the the in cut to, to court there you know in the in the third quarter which was huge so we threw the ball when we had to and we made some connections when we had to and that was you know the difference in the game yep. All right, they threw the ball when they had to. Um, I, I'd argue you threw the ball too much. That We yes. talked about the first half, 15 right. pass attempts. That That is, see, honestly, that's about eight more pass attempts than they needed to have in the first half. And then that gets you to 18 rushing attempts. Who knows what the game would have looked like had they flipped that role. And that's on Sean Payton. Yeah, it's on Sean Payton. Um, was it a little bit on the bidet injury? Oh, good Because call. you're going fair with point. a plan. And I, I'm not making excuses for Sean, but I'm just like wondering why. No, that's why. a fair point. Again, back to the why, but like, (laughs) you know, like, is there like bidet was going to be a big part of this game plan, not giving anything away, but let's just guess everybody that Tyler bidet was going to be a big part of this game plan. When he goes down, do you, in a sense, panic a little bit, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Sean Payton is panicky or anxious or whatever, but it's like, okay, you, you had a big part of piece of your puzzle taken away. Um, you did go to Javante enough, but in the first half and the Troy Franklin thing, like stop forcing it. I mean, just screenplays in general. What, yeah, it, it didn't work the first six times. Why would you try it six more? Right, right. Um, it was like Freaky Friday with him and Nathaniel Hackett. <laughs> like, and not the Hackett called a great game and the Jets lost. So take that L on the way out, Mike Malone. But like, no, no, no. Okay. Why do you, why are you screening all day? Why are you forcing Franklin? I mean, it's ridiculous when you look at the box score. 60 yards passing, all of it to Cortland Sutton because one catch for three yards to Michael Burton, two catches for three yards to Javante, and then four targets, two catches, negative two yards for Troy Franklin. (laughs) Like, it's not working. So if it's not working, stop forcing it. And this is where the Devon Vele conversation comes in. Like, exactly, it's not there with Franklin. It doesn't need to be there yet. You won. But it's like, okay, Court needs some help. Little Jordan, somebody, Josh Reynolds, Help. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to help out this passing game because it's not just all about Bo Nix. Bo Nix wasn't sacked. The Jets hunt quarterbacks. They special their specialty. They're specialized in hunting quarterbacks. Bo didn't get sacked. Nope. That's on offensive line. That's on Bo getting rid of the ball when he can and the rain shot putting it. But damn it, if nobody else shows up, we can't blame Bo. Court is showing up. But Dulcich isn't showing up. Josh Reynolds isn't showing up. Greg Dulcich isn't showing up. Did I say Greg Dulcich? Did, but he yeah. deserves it twice. Little Jordan Humphrey, he does deserve it <laughs> twice. And then put him on the bench. Like, come on. We can't – people can't blame Bo Nix when nobody's helping him other than court. There's another name you didn't even say, and I think it, it speaks to the state of this player. Uh-oh. Marvin Mims. Marvin, can you please do something? He's had a couple of – I, what two now decent punt returns special sure. teams play yeah yeah look he got lit the hell up uh, and that it was cool to see the Jets guy come over and dap right, him up right, and be like right. my bad you didn't see the football because that was scary and that could get very dangerous oh, yes. but Marvin Mims the second round pick from a year ago yes when it, it's all said and done we're gonna look back and go George Payton Sean Payton's first pick was Marvin Mims and the guy has not done anything to help this football and team he's win games chomping at the bit. That's the thing. I'm around Marvin every single week, and I can tell you that dude is motivated to do something, to get that opportunity, and he's just not. And Troy Franklin, like, again, I like that Troy's really happy. I like that he's been a little bit more consistent in practice because that was his problem in training camp. But give those four targets to Marvin Mims. 
Maybe he does something. Maybe he does nothing. I don't care, but he's ahead of where Franklin is now. Uh, uh, again, the screen passes, I was so sick and tired of them, but right. I would much rather see Marvin Mim take one step back and catch a screen pass and see what he can do than Troy Franklin. Can that be Troy Franklin's game in a couple years from now? Hopefully, right? Hopefully if it works out the right, right way, but it's damn sure not right now. Right. And where's the Marvin Mims end around? Yeah. Good you call. know, to help out your ground game. Uh, did I see Stephon Diggs had a, had some carries? I didn't like that, see that. I mean, they. this is what you do with a playmaker like Marvin Mims and to deny his speed because Troy Franklin has speed too. Well, it's not working. Again, barnyard psychology. How's that working out? With Troy Franklin, it's not. Mm-hmm. Stop forcing it. doesn't mean it can't someday, and Franklin could be a Pro Bowl receiver, and him and Knicks and college teammates. That's awesome. This isn't a movie. This is real life. Yeah. This is football. Go with what works. And I want to see, especially because, listen, Marvin is ready. He is willing and he is able. And you're just ignoring him. And that's on Sean Payton. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to take a timeout, but we will get back to hearing a little bit from Bo Nix. Uh, see how he feels about the win yesterday. And by the way, see, I was going to say, we're kind of talking about the things we want to see and what went wrong in New York. This is all with a win. So <laughs> right. it's it's great right. to right. be able to break this stuff down and go, yeah, they still have to fix this, 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 and this, but they are on a two-game winning streak while they still have to fix all of those problems. So uh, it's a good place to be.